Today's episode is sponsored by Dansoft Gamers. Dansoft Gamers is the leading distributor of video games and other consumer gadgets like the podcast microphone sets, ring lights, headphones, and affordable smart watches, and many other cool gadgets. For these and more, visit their website at www.dansoftgamers.co. That is www.dansoftgamers.co. Looking for a natural glowy complexion without compromising your delicate beautiful skin? Well, Zoka Beauty Delivered has skincare experts to provide recommendations to clients' concerns. Mainly, free consultation, skin analysis, suggested recommendations, and we also sell a wide range of authentic international beauty brands at great prices. We can recommend, or if you already know what you're looking for, just let us know and we will have it delivered to you. We are open from Monday to Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. We also do special appointments for Sunday. Trust Zuka Beauty Delivered with your skin today. Trust Zuka Beauty Delivered with your skin today. Mujebale, Mujebale, Mujebale. My name is Barney Kibuka and welcome to another episode of the Ugandan Ball Talk Show. Before I start asking you questions or having a conversation with you, I when I open your Instagram, it says Leia Smalls. How did you get the name Leia Smalls? I want my listeners to, to know about <laughs> the, the name Leia Smalls and what it means. Wow, um, I didn't see that coming actually. Um, Leah Smalls came in, uh, there's a model, I follow a variety of models internationally. She's called Joanne Smalls. Okay. And literally she's small. Mm -hmm. So I figured I would have the same impact. Um, way back in high school, university, I've always been the smallest in my class. Okay. So most people like, oh, she looks like a baby or she's too small. So I figured, um, Using Leah Smalls would just be a direct description. You don't even have to ask me why Leah Smalls. Mm-hmm. I feel it just connects. She's yeah. small. She's <laughs> yeah, tr- trust me, I knew what it means, but I just wanted to bother you just to have you say because it, it's self-explanatory. Like you know, <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, so when I host people on my podcast, I really like to sometimes ask them about their background to know about them. Um, so I want to ask you about your background, like uh, where were you born and where did you grow up? Okay, so um, I was born in UG, Uganda. I've been in Uganda. Um, we lived back then, you know, we shift with time. My first home was in Chivuye. Okay. That's in around Kampala. Um, by then it was like a blooming um, slum area. By then, you know, your parents are trying to come up and <laughs> mm-hmm. so it was my first home. It was fun. I met so many friends. It had people from different areas and countries. Even um, refugees used yeah. to live with us. Um, not until I was around eight and then we had to shift to my current house right now where we are in Namasuba. Namasuba. Yeah, I know those areas. I used to be on Entebbe Road all the time because I went to mm-hmm. school in Chisubi Mapea. So I would go, I would go on Entebbe Road quite a lot. So um, where did you go to school then? Like, uh, did you go to school also in Chibuye and Namasuba? Where, where schools did you go to? Primary. Um, there were schools around that neighborhood. Uh, my first school, pre primary, was um, Winston. Mm-hmm. And um, we used to walk because Winston Najana Kumbi. So we used to walk there with either my house help or my dad or my mm-hmm. mom, whoever was available. Yeah. Then um, when my best teacher that used to pay attention <laughs> left the school. Others, others were not paying attention, huh? <laughs> no, like there's always that one extra teacher that gives you detail. Like yeah. from the time I arrived to school, she would always be in for me and I would be excited. So mm-hmm. she left the school, you know, and my parents showed like, oh, um, I don't think she can survive. Then I was taken to a neighborhood school in the same area. Um, if you've heard of Najana uh, Kumbiku, Masanya Lazi, I hope you yeah. remember. Mm-hmm. So I went to Waterford after mm-hmm. that. I joined Waterford where I completed to primary seven. 
Okay. How about high school? So with high school, I went, um, I had two schools, A-level different, O-level different. Mm -hmm. um, with O-level, I went to King's College, Udo. Oh, wow. Fancy yes. schools. And <laughs> it looks like everybody yeah. I host on the podcast went to fancy schools. I'm the only one who didn't go to a, like a fancy, <laughs> fancy school. Uh -huh. man, it's not it's not about being fancy man you had to get schools that help you man portray your papers you know yeah, that's, in this kind of hours you have to move with back up that is strong yeah exactly so mm -hmm. all level yeah i had king's college Buddha on board and i performed so well then um my parents thought i would have a change it was an influence from a friend i like no She's had enough of, you know, fanciness, like you called it. It's mm -hmm. high time she goes to the hustling. So I went okay. to Seta High. Seta High, Seta high is not um, like, it's not, it's not a hustling. Seta High is also up <laughs> there. <laughs> no, they are very different systems. Okay. Like, you know, KCB is, it's all about all royalty. You're treated like, you know, mm -hmm. high places. And then Seta High, it's not a bad school. Seta yeah. High is not bad, but then, you know, you... It's a very different system. They push you. It's like really um military school, I guess. Like you okay. had to sharpen up your tools. Yeah. So that's those are my two schools. Yeah, I had I had friends that went to Seda High. Um, so when you mentioned that, like, yeah, Seda High, okay, it might be different than uh Budo, but um uh, it's also up there. So mm -hmm. um you, when you finish uh form six, did you go to university? Yeah, I immediately we have a vacation for a year here. Okay. So I, I applied to different universities. Um Makere University Business School, Makere University. Um, I also applied to Nkozi, that is Uganda Matters University. Uh -huh. However, um Uganda Matters University called me in first. Okay. So I went there for all my three years. All right. So most, uh, all of us, or most of your friends, most of the people in Uganda, uh, your Instagram, they know you as an entrepreneur, fashion lover, influencer, model. But I'm going to start with the model part of it. When did okay. you realize that you want to, you are going to be a, a model? Like, when did you realize the first time that you, you say, the yeah, the first time? What about you, like you a to... and then you became a model? <laughs> uh, no, no, it's not like that. But you know, some talents are inborn. Mm -hmm. Till you grow up and you feel like, oh, you, you feel with this other side that pulls you most. Yeah. Um, honestly, I keep on telling people I love so many things, but looks like the fashion, the fashion um, sensation pulls more. I realized I could be into modeling when I was eight. Mm -hmm. um, I used to have cousins who used to come by and She's really one of my close cousins. She's called Priscilla. Um, she was older than me by two years. So she always watched fashion shows only. Um, by then it was UTV. Uh -huh. Today people call it UBC. And you'd see the big girls than Naomi, the kinds of like doing it. On, and she would outfit I'm like, man, I have nothing to do but to watch. Uh -huh. So I was lured into loving fashion from eight. But I didn't know if I could really be a model like in one way or participate into it in the future. Mm -hmm. But it so happens um, after my form four, I was in VAP. I had aunties who would do tailoring on Loki. So they're like, we want you to do photo shoots for us. And by then I hadn't even joined um, model school. I didn't know anything. The yeah. only thing I was relying on is YouTube and what I used to watch back then. I'm like, let me figure this out. Let me do what these girls in the magazine do. And it just hit. Like, I didn't even force it. It just flowed so easily. Like, it was meant for me. It was yeah. just about me grabbing it. So it was by eight, I picked the interest. 16, I started doing it. Mm -hmm. So how did that go with you? Like, with the schools that you went to, how did you, how were you able to manage modeling with education? And how did the schools you went to support that dream? Okay, um, my schools would have different um, the talent shows. Talent shows put up, MDDs. Um, so I would low key participate in these. But mm -hmm. it's funny, I didn't really um, show it up in school that I love modeling. I would just talk about it. Mm 
Yeah. However, in the holidays, I'll go back and enroll. So as you know, by then media was starting to come up and pop. So people mm-hmm. would see your pictures and they're like, yeah, oh, what you're a silent burner in school, <laughs> you're doing this. And then outside we are seeing pictures on Facebook. By then everyone was, oh, Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> so you post this, you're like, yeah, when I'm, you know, when I'm in holiday, I locally do this and this. Um, remember I had a shift to a, another school that is more of read books, Excel. So it wasn't easy to balance both modeling in school at the same time um, study. I had to always wait for the holiday. Remember at the same time you have pressures from your family, that's your parents. Um, sometimes they're negative about it until they see you out. But yeah. I loved what I was doing. I had to push through no matter what. I'll just bring this in shortly. At university, I I once ditched a paper for a photo shoot. <laughs> Like everyone was like, uh, Leah, how do you do that? I what's, what's your professor's name? I want to send him a shout out to come and just tune in right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, he was called Idraku. I don't even know if he still remembers, but for what I know, he called me and he's like, where are you? I told him at, I'm at a photo shoot. He's like, Leah, are you serious? You didn't right even lie? Now, um, I didn't lie about it because then I was thinking of, I have to get to the film board no mm-hmm. matter what this is my chance you know <laughs> exactly so but when god is on your side he i don't know how he did it but mm-hmm. he gave me second chance like when people went into holiday he called me he's like fine come and do your paper but as a supplementary yeah. i just thank because i couldn't even tell my parents i dished a paper for a photo shoot that they'll kill me mm-hmm. they'll kill yeah, me for sure <laughs> so <laughs> So your journey uh, through modeling, I'm glad like you shared that and shared a little bit of uh, what happened like when you were at university ditching a paper. I would, I would do it for something. I, I did it for, like I'll tell you a story. I know it's your, it's your um, interview, but when I was in high school, we would skip chemistry because I didn't like chemistry at all. I wasn't understanding anything they were teaching. I dropped chemistry in senior <laughs> one, but I had wow. to just keep going with it. And we would go to play soccer and just leave the class and just, you know, teacher, we, we, it's I the same see. thing. If I'm there, if I'm not, I'm not I'm learning anything. So that I had to do something for what I love. So you're not the only person who has done it. So, but anyway. But, but you know, mm-hmm. always for the bold ones, not everyone can do what you do. No. Most people up to now when we talk about it, like, yeah, we can't believe you did that. I'm like, passion. Yeah. You like something, that's it. So talk about your journey in Miss Tourism. I know on your profile in on Instagram, you're the second runner-up um, in Miss Tourism in 2012. Um, how was the journey like? How did you participate in and how did the whole thing go? Just walk us through that. Um, I'll start with this. Um, pageantry and modeling are very different things. I don't know if people know that. but I, I didn't know that either. Talk. So yeah, you should educate yeah, us. Yeah, it's a very... <laughs> Um, modeling is, I don't know, it's freelancing, carefree. People don't mind what you do as long as you put your fashion out there. Pageantry mm-hmm. is, your, it's like you're being mentored to be a queen. Mm-hmm. So I had never thought of pageantry in my life. I won't lie. I was all about modeling photo shoots. That's it. You are in a magazine, meet people, why, why? So a friend of mine tells me, Aaliyah, I think, she sent me a flyer. She's like, you should try out pageantry. I tell her, I do not know anything. You know, I, I, I've seen, I've been voting for people, pushing them to do pageants, what, what become queen bees and what I've never, that's not me. I don't feel like queen <laughs> in that category. Mm-hmm. She's like, no, you should try it and see. I was like, oh, here comes the amateur. <laughs> so um, I apply, sending whatever requirements they wanted. Now it was high time to sit down my family and tell them, you guys, I'm going for a pageant. Mm-hmm. When I put the news in their faces, they're like, what? Like, Lyra, in pageantry, that, that's not you. You're just loud noise maker. How is it even possible? You're going to, you know, humble yourself like those guys. I'm like, I'll try. I will try. So I pushed through, um, went for the auditions. I made it. I was so excited. I met girls. It became tough when it was time for voting. Mm-hmm. Now I really see what politicians go through when you're trying to hire people to get you on their side yeah. 
Yeah. I never, and you know, there was pressures from work. Mm-hmm. You're working, you know, yeah. you're looking for those bots. You have to make sure you comply I just, I just went, I just went through that because uh, the podcast was nominated <gasps> in the Pals Pals Awards in Uganda, and I was working, but then coordinate the votes. So I really understand uh-huh. uh, what you, what you're saying there. Now me, I knew because I was doing. You, you wake up every morning, you sleep on. Please vote for me. It's like you, you. I would even have dreams. Like I'm mm-hmm. already in a pageant. But like oh god, it was too much for me. Mm-hmm. And you know, some people be like, okay, we'll vote, but you're not sure. So I had to put up a policy. I had to think straight. Like if you vote, send me a screenshot to confirm you vote. Yeah. Then there was pressures because they're like, um, we're taking the top five. You couldn't, I, I lost so much weight. It was too much for me. There are days mm-hmm. I would sit down and break down. And yeah. you have your friends calling you. We have your back. Don't you worry. Then your boss is also telling you, Leah, why did you report to work late today? I didn't <laughs> rest enough. It was <laughs> What is it What was, was the much. policy of voting? Like how <laughs> were people voting? So the online or... It was an online vote, but Facebook. And okay. you had to have the original Facebook. Now, remember, with people, everyone has a Facebook live or a Facebook superior, whatever. So they had to remove that one. Then, you know, it was too much work. Then there was also pressure. Sometimes if it was possible for you, you had to buy the vote. But I was like, you know what? Um, I'm not even sure if I'm getting to the top three, but I, I didn't evolve in that. So mm-hmm. with time, the voting went in for four months. Bonnie, for four good months, you know what it means to tell people to vote for four months. Yeah. Two weeks already, people were tired. They're like, man, Leah, mm-hmm. add that child. Baby, che, like, it is too much. So yeah, I, it's I, exactly I just kept what on just praying. happened to us, too. Yeah. <laughs> I just um, kept on praying. I'm like, God, if this is for me, fine, it will be for me. So, four months run by, we go in for the finals. Um, I'd never attended such a big mass of people being asked questions, you know, by the panel, the judges, mm-hmm. and everyone is cheering you on. Um, you're scared, you're like, um, whatever. But then I am very confident. All questions that asked me, I had to answer. I, I don't know why, but there was this one question that pulled me off. I'm like, really? Does it have to be me? They kept yeah. on asking the other girls the easy ones. Mm-hmm. over what is this capital city of and then when it came to me they're like alia so do you think um do you encourage a lockdown in your country i'm like what the hell <laughs> you people where do you what, what was the question what is the question they asked you they asked me Leah, what do you think of us um a third lockdown in your country due to mm-hmm. covid yeah i was like that's like an essay right now it's like a question <laughs> in a prepa why yeah. is it and like really but you know i gave them what i gave them but i was like Oof, i'm not sure what i've said but i've said what i say mm-hmm. but it still turns up um the giving award i took up the second runner up you know when it's your first time mm-hmm. something and you hit somewhere like yeah that was victory for me because i mm-hmm. didn't think i would really even get a position you know um but after that journey, of course, you have to use the platform to sell yourself out. I feel the pageant run kind of put me more of a spotlight, by the way. Mm-hmm. It had me an audience because I've been connecting different people, meeting different people. I've made so many friends. I've learned a lot from it. It's not yeah. easy, but it changes you in a way that you, your behavior, how you carry yourself, it's like you're influential to people to so many people your family your friends so you have to keep on your watch until you hand over however the title still remains because my yeah. you took up for that yeah so that's it yeah well i was gonna go back to what you mentioned like it's always good when you participate in something like that because it builds like you said it, it puts your name out there so many people know you and uh many people know about your brand and it it's like it adds something onto you. So it's not like sometimes even if you don't win um, the whole thing, it's there's something that is added to your life, like, you know, to your brand. And anytime you put your name out there, it's it's a good thing like to add on to that. Yeah. I was just, when you were sharing that, I was just going to share with you because uh, my podcast was nominated in Paul's Awards there, but it's the same experience. Like you go through asking people to vote and now they mm-hmm. say the results are not coming out till like a month, which 
it's the fifth it's next weekend but like asking people oh to vote God. every week every week every week in two weeks like people were already done they were tired are the results <laughs> out yet are the results out yeah and like you I have to wake that. up go to work do all these things but um it's very hectic it's just that people won't understand until they are there until mm-hmm. you face it but the pressure is always on you you just lose yourself but i feel yeah. at some point it's like it's always testing our patience to see mm-hmm. what kind of person you really are and you know, that wasn't it was a hot seat i just couldn't but i i made it through anyway yeah, yeah. i did So I want you to to talk about um I've seen you post about I follow you on Instagram and my listeners should all go check out your page uh Nabuka Leah um and then you we're going to talk about that later but you the last three days like over starting October you were running this Miss Rotaract Rotaract yeah Uganda how was that like and what what was the goal of that and what was the whole Okay, so I'm going also talk to, about um, queens supporting queens because I like that statement. <laughs> All right, so I'll answer this. But I'll talk about how Miss Rotary came to be. I joined um, Rotary in uh, 2019, COVID time. Mm-hmm. Um, people had been talking about Rotary. Rotary. Like, Farimu COVID in Gagokola sent. Exactly. <laughs> We have to think straight, man. Okay, you <laughs> <laughs> okay so... Um, Actually, Miss Rotary came in after I participated in a pageant. You know, most people know Rotary for charity, organizing trips, helping out people, you know. But it's not an NGO. Let's not mistake that. It's mm-hmm. not an NGO. So um, with my club, I'm in Rotaract of Namas. So it's a small club of almost like 55 people. So okay. I'm in there. I make the 55. When I participated in the pageant, these guys pushed me through, by the way. They really... I really got to know that this is a community of people who don't know when you need someone's help, you know, but they kept on pushing and pushing. So I really appreciate that. So I thought um, of bringing out pageantry into Rotary because no one had ever thought of that. Mm-hmm. When I brought up that idea to them, it was like a boom. They're like, where have you been all of our life, Leah? Um, they appreciated the idea and brought it to him. It's still running. Um, it's actually initiated this year, okay? Uh-huh. Um, but they are precious to it. You know, when you're starting something new, it's too much work. You have to research about it. You have propositions. You have propositions. You have to invest a lot. But um, Rotary really helps because... And there are people in there that have their investments. They are ready to come up on board as sponsors. Mm-hmm. But you also have to be aggressive when you're like, man, this is what I want. This is what I'm supposed to. Because initially, they don't know anything about pageantry. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So I have to be in there and tell them what to do, looking for participants. It, it's not, not um, an easy journey. Mm-hmm. So it all happened when I brought that idea to my president. The club was in for it. And They're like, fine, we start whatever comes out. Right now, this year is like a testing year, but next year things will be better. Okay. Um, we had to have a launch. I was so worried about the launch because I didn't even know how many people would turn up. You know when you're doing a first time thing, like, it's like when you're producing food and you're putting it out there on the market, so like you guys come up and then you have like five people coming up for your show that. To me, I don't know. It mm-hmm. was just God's grace because I effectively advertised, posted. I'm like, you guys should come. And people turned up for the launch. It's actually at the launch that I even got more audience people who are willing to help me. Then we had the auditions. I was able to come up with 15 girls for a pageant that, that are really interested, not posting them like, oh, please come. No, they just yeah. came on their own. So as for now, it's boot camp, training them, basing on what I got. Mm-hmm. from my previous pageant. It's what I'm doing, helping them out, and also to stimulate coffee. The main issue is why I brought up Miss Rotary in the, it's like a fundraiser project. Mm-hmm. Um, we are planning all the money that is going to come up. We want to fund ladies um, going through birth, maternity. We want to provide maternity um, kids to these ladies, but on grade three hospitals, not the big hospitals, these hospitals that are in the villages, in sub-counties, you know, that they can access um, 
maternity kits on their own money. Because some, sometimes when I when I made a study and when they're like, we can't even afford for some fashion, we can't afford money for pills and even birth material. So I was like, I think I can handle the birth material. But because mm-hmm. that's the most, most important because this is a mother going to bring life and now she doesn't have anything to use. Right. It's really embarrassing and it's sad. It just touched my heart. I was like, okay, fine. Let's do this for them. So Mr. Chark is after that. That's really cool to hear that, uh, you know, most people, and I've, I've hosted uh, quite a few um now I'm going to start to think about what you told me earlier. The pageants are different than modeling. So I, <laughs> I've also a, a few that call them models or what, but like uh, Naka Kande, I was on here and she was talking about her journey, Miss Uganda. Um, mm-hmm. So I have an episode with her. Actually, I've hosted her quite a few times. We've been talking about different things. And um, so like she was talking about the journey too, but I like to hear when you just, what you just said here that, it's not only about modeling and walking on the runway. It does more than that. It's helping, like you were just saying, helping mothers who don't have the resources when they're going to give birth. So, but most people, especially in Uganda, they look at it as, oh, these people are just showing off their bodies and just walking on the runway. And they don't think about the positive things behind that, which you guys are trying to educate to these people who are just thinking about that. Thank you, Bonnie. I'll talk about that. When people say, like, I've had challenges, you introduce yourself. Um, of course, you're like, oh, I'm an accountant, I'm a doctor. They're like, oh, that's so cool. Then when you add the model part, they're like, oh, I think there's a problem there. Like, mm-hmm. um, my country, I will speak on behalf of those who are not yet exposed. A few are exposed, they know what modeling is, but Aside people thinking you're making money, in the end, you're out there trying to influence a child, uh, a girl that is sitting on themselves or helping. In the end, it's not that we keep the money to ourselves, no. We always help people out there. It's not that we're going to come and post it in your face. Oh, I bought her TV. Oh, I, I did her hair. Oh, I took her to a spa. Oh my God, I contributed to a surgery, no. What people should know, modeling, yes, we are showing our bodies out there, but it's outfits. We are selling outfits and our mm-hmm. faces. Fine for the money, but we fundraise it for people. Backstage, we are helping girls out there. You do not know what really happens backstage. No one knows. So most people always take it to be, oh, it's showbiz. It's for fun, getting men. No, honey, mm-hmm. it's too much to put in. Sometimes you even put in your own, you know, your own yeah. funding. No one will come up and be like, oh, I'm, I'm sponsoring this. I'm giving you this, you know. But it's passion, because it's for the strong people. If you have a very strong heart, you can survive as a model. If you're weak, you're going to fall out. Oh, exactly. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you get criticism. But you always get criticism all the time. Yeah. And it's, you have to find ways to handle it. Or so else you're just going to fall out. Yeah. Who are the designers that designed those, especially the pictures that you sent me that we're going to use for our posters? Like, who are people who designed those outfits? Because they are really amazing. Um, thank you. I have, like I said in the beginning, I have my aunties, my relatives. I have friends that um, are designers. Okay. For the different photo shoots and runways, I've made different designers. Um, my one is my cousin, she's Prissy B. She's done some of my outfits and she calls me in. I do photo shoots. Um, I'm always pushing her and supporting her. Yeah, sometimes I buy <laughs> that is there. Yeah. And then I have Alia Zoe, they're all low key, but they do good work if you check out their pages. Mm-hmm. Alia, uh, most of the time, you know, she calls me. We've even done rooftop photo shoots, she's into unconventional type of design. Yeah, in that she'll use paper or paper cups or pins. She won't use material, like get to uh-huh. satin and mix. I love her for that. She thinks outside the box. That makes those things really beautiful. Uh-huh. I have my auntie. She, um, I'll call her auntie because she's big, but she's not really blood mine related. Okay. She's called her. Auntie Q, she gets um, most of her materials and designs always from uh, Nigeria. She actually stays around yeah, 
Ajana Kumbi, she one of the people that pushed me into modeling. She's like, yeah, you can, you can. So I'll do photo shoots with her for free. Okay. Okay, but my face always featured. Mm -hmm. Um this is um I've worked once with um with Joram. Yes, as a feeling model. Yeah. And I met those few mod, um, designers, Guava Muno, there's a, a lady called Bridget something. Those are the most too prominent I've worked for okay. really, that are having a name in my country. Yeah, we're, we're working on having Jerome on the podcast. Uh, he's been really busy. He's always busy, but um, we're working he is on very having busy. Him. But I would really appreciate if you have him. He's a very nice, strict yeah. person. Yeah, he is for yeah. sure. So... Um, I don't know. I have a, a limit time on Zoom, but I think I can make it work. There's a question that I wanted to ask you. It's just a more of a personal question and what you think about it. So I noticed in your pictures and I noticed right now in the in the Zoom, you have a nose ring. I don't know how it's perceived <laughs> in Uganda. I've, I have a lot of friends who have nose piercing, nose rings. But growing Woo! up in Uganda and knowing Uganda, I wanted to know which... What was that like for you to have a nose? What have you gone through with that? What are people like saying to you or what is, are they perceiving you are having a nose piercing or nose ring? I think I saw this coming. Ever since we prepared <laughs> um, for this podcast, I knew the nose thing never <laughs> meet. Never. But let me say something. <laughs> wow. I love being different. I won't lie. Okay. Um, I have piercings on my ears. Yeah, on, on my nose, the nose one is the prominent one. I've always loved being different and different has cost me enough. First, I won't even lie to you. I got criticism from day one. I got this nose ring um, prior to COVID um, opening. I think when the, 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 the disease had kind of gone down and mm -hmm. this is like a marking of victory that I survived this whole covid you know yeah episode so more, i have reasons for my piercings first i wanted to be different first it's like i was thanking god that who could survive this so i had to put this i had to get a step down mm -hmm. most of the girls have the one at the top of their nose but i love doing things differently and i'm a very daring person so yeah okay um first when the first time it started with family my mom wasn't happy with this she's like yo girl you've done things but this what do you as in what why even why are you doing this like we are this you should get it off i'm like okay i'll get it off in my head. but in my mind i was like no that's not going to happen this is here to us mm -hmm. my dad just looked at not he's like you know what i think i have kids but this one is way beyond my kids <laughs> um but then um a few of the family of course i have aunties that come in and tell you we are traditionally it's you know it's not appealing Mm -hmm. Some have the audacity to even call me a whore. That's in my community. You know, I, I get it's mainly criticism, but I'm strong. However, my cousins in my age, caliber, some of them are like, um, well, Leah, if you have a septum mm -hmm. in a country like Uganda, you're a very strong woman. And that is mm -hmm. okay. very strong because even in town when I walk, I'm like, no mask, nothing, let them see. Some love it, they're like, oh, we love how you need to. Others are like, but, um, is it going to, to affect your work? What, what? I'm like, it hasn't affected anything. I work, do my things. It's just that there's always negativity to the septum. So yeah. I'll say to the girls up there, if you want to get the septum, be ready for criticism. No one welcomed it positive until they got used to it. It's like, it killed your look as a girl. Um, mm -hmm. How are you going to end up with a man? What do you think they're going to think about you? There's so many people <laughs> coming in, but <laughs> I'm like, man, whoever will come in, man, they'll love, they'll carry me that way I am. Yeah. Yeah, things myself, but I've enjoyed it. I love that mm -hmm. it gives me attention. Mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. get that thing. Yeah. And but, but for what I've seen, it's prominent in European countries, like mm -hmm. you said, your friends have it. Here, yeah. yeah, it's just you. But when I meet people who have it, I'm like, oh, I'm not the only one. But yeah. it's like, percent it's two percent it's not everyone is daring you know mm -hmm. but me i love it i think with time, i don't think it's going to go off now okay the reason why i asked you that and the reason why i prepared a question for you because my wife my brother no my brother's wife um 
he ha- she has the piercing in her nose and uh-huh. we have family in Kenya so we would go to Kenya to visit them and the first time we went there they put my mom on the side it's like oh your daughter-in-law has a nose piercing and it was a big deal about it so I'm <laughs> like when I see somebody else who has it I was like they have to have a story about theirs <laughs> <laughs> I prepared that for you. Like, I oh think my God. Sorry for that. Trust me, I knew Bonnie. There's no way this question is because everyone I meet is a problem. Yeah. It is a problem. Especially like, being in problem. Uganda too. Like that's that's why you ask. It's you not ask easy. I know you're right. In mm-hmm. Uganda, where people don't have exposure or yeah. openness to things. Mm-hmm. With me, I'm open-minded. So I think that's why it was mm-hmm. easy for me, but. It was fire. Up to now, it is still a problem. Yeah. yeah, it is still a problem. I don't know. What do you think about ladies that have damos? You've heard of damos? It's a type of piercing that girls get at the back of their. Mm-hmm. The, of the their... back on the back, yeah. Uh huh. And girls who do waist bit. What's your view on that in the fashion sense before we go culture? You're putting me on on the spot right here, so but people are gonna. Seat. Yeah, you're putting me in a hard set. People are going to be listening to Bonnie's answers. But um, my my parents have told me something in life that I've, I use in my life. is like when somebody does something, they have a reason why they're doing it. It's either making them happy or it's either... There's, like if you have a reason why you're doing it, I'm not against it. Like if it's something that makes you happy, I'm doing it because it makes me happy. I think I'll look good with it. I'm all in for it but if somebody does something and they don't have a reason why they're doing it they're just doing it for i mean even if you do it for fun it's your choice you know um in america they have that saying your body your choice or my body my choice like i want to do whatever i want to my body like he i have a friend who has those uh piercings on the back i have a friend who has like the kundi piercing i don't know how you guys call it um i have a friend yeah i have a friend who has like a thousand piercings on the ear like around it i have friends who like wear uh bracelets on ankle bracelets you know like i'm i'm not against anybody's decision on being well um i see where it's hard like from uganda because people like you mentioned earlier they're not exposed to these things and uganda is a country where somebody i'm gonna come and tell you there if you pierce your nose you are a prostitute, mm. and then you're exactly. gonna take that. Then they, you, that person is you, that person is gonna go tell another person. Like if you wear nail piercing, you're a prostitute. Another person is gonna tell another person if you wear that. So the word is gonna circle, but they don't have proof of that. It's just somebody said, and because we don't have a lot of information and exposure, we believe what people say. Like we believe what anybody says about anything. Like if you do this, you are this. Trust me, there's a lot of things I've learned ever since I moved to America that were told us wrong because of what we believe, but we don't know. But if you're able to do your own research, you can realize that, hey, it doesn't mean that you're a prostitute if a nose piercing. It's just like if somebody can have a piercing on the ear, you can have a piercing on the nose. Like why are parents all in to pierce their (laughs) girls' ears, but they're not, you know, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Um, it's um, like what you're saying is right. It's exposure. My country, people don't love reading and research. Mm-hmm. I won't blame them because uh, my country, we are traditionally based people. It's all based on cultural beliefs and norms. So this whole new thing that is coming in, they look at it as foreign influence. Yeah. And for the few who are exposed, they won't mind you. They're like, oh, she's doing her, being happy, being different. Mm-hmm. For those who are rigid and what it's going to be hard for you to convince, and that is what I go through. So as by now, I'm marked as a whole in my country sometimes. But mm-hmm. Those who know Leah are like, um, you people, I think you should be you. When you see her in blue, don't even question why she doesn't have orange. That's mm-hmm. it. It's the same thing okay, with I, tattoos. I, it's the same thing with tattoos. Like when people, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll say this for myself, like I grew up in a Christian home. And mm-hmm. anytime we saw somebody with tattoos, dreads, or your muyai, like that's 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 a muyai, and you we grew up hating tattoos and thinking like people who have tattoos are bad people. But when mm-hmm. I came to America, you see people even in church, even where like praying, 
and they're living, you find somebody with a bunch of tattoos, but he's the nicest person you've ever found in your life. Like he's even better than the 10 Christians, you know, in the church, you know, like he, but because of what Avant Shibat Sigamu and because we don't do the research, we don't, you don't go to ask somebody like, you know, I'll see you with your nose piercing. And I'm like, oh, she's a prostitute. But why don't you go and ask her? Why did you get your nose piercing? And she'll tell you, oh, I, I really liked it. And I thought I'll look cool with it. And there is your answer. Like you're not gonna judge her because she has told you, and so that's that's what I think. Because most people stereotype, you know, they put you in a category. It's like colored hair. If you've heard of people, um, colored hair. Mm -hmm. Everyone, when someone does colored hair, orange or red, they're like or yeah, like you said, for, like mm -hmm. no one even question why is she doing. They just be like she must be a whore or yeah. she must be spoiled, you know. But with tattoos, I love to ask, do you have one? Mm -hmm. Now that you've been back there, do you have one? No, I don't yeah, have a tattoo. I have... I th oh, oh, really? No, I don't have oh. a tattoo, but I... I <laughs> one thing I thought of doing here, actually, is just getting, like, dreads in, in my hair because I've grown my hair. Um, I thought of getting a tattoo on my hand, but just a cross. I don't really like a lot of tattoos, but I don't mind when people have them. I just don't... Me, myself, like... I never thought about it, um, but I don't mind people who get tattoos. If you want it, if you, Bobanga, you're strong enough to go through that pain when you want it, you can get it. You know. You know? Oh, yes. Why do people always think it's so painful? It's not so painful. It depends which part you get it. Of course, if you get the tattoo in the bony area, yeah, you have the bone part but his flesh, it, it doesn't really hurt so much. Okay, so that brings me to your business. We had this conversation on outside the, the the recording the, 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 I and i said i'm gonna bring it up in the podcast what type of business do you i think i saw some on on part on um whatsapp because you have it in your catalog uh the pictures and the stuff you sell so what kind of business do you do and what what do you sell i i love jewelry so mm -hmm. i do jewelry most of the time okay. women accessories anything that makes a woman beautiful Apart from here, I haven't really specialized in two wigs yet because I'm not sure. I'm still making a study of which type of hair or designs people want. Mm -hmm. But I'm into jewelry, into bracelets, anything that uh, a woman can put on themselves and look beautiful. That's it. Yeah. Um, it's both um mobile at the same time. I also have a shop. Okay. okay? Um, the shop is in Tinder, so at the same time, we can do delivery whenever you want it. And I try to um, expand by also bringing in men's stuff, but mainly for now, it's respect for men. Meaning mm -hmm. I haven't gone into ties or perfumes or what, mm -hmm. yeah, or watches yet, but it's going to be a process in the long run. I'm still case studying, I would say, okay. now adapting. Probably. Yeah, I I like a lot. I love a lot of bracelets and necklaces and and all that. So when when you start that, you hit me up. I'll buy some. No problem. I'll wait for that money. <laughs> <It's been dollar laughs> <form. laughs> anyway, I'm so excited to have you here uh, to talk about just have a conversation with me about stuff. And I like this open conversation where you talk about things that you didn't even plan to talk about. Like when we talked about, I really like that conversation of the piercings and uh, just talking that perspective. I'm looking forward to listening it to back, uh, listening it again uh, when I'm editing or like to the people who have been on live here. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want to shout out to all your friends for coming in to show the support uh, for the listeners who can't see Zoom who are listening on Spotify anywhere. On Zoom, we have a Zoom party here. She brought in like a lot of friends and it's a, a full house. <laughs> it's a full house. Uh, shout out to Jamal, the model, brave uh, coward. There was a lot of other people, but I think they, they've left. But shout out to all of you guys who are still on here. Um, so as we are coming to the conclusion of this podcast, I have a few questions I want to ask you. And these are questions I ask everybody I host on the podcast. Um what has been a life lesson you've learned in life um, till today? My greatest um, lesson I've learned, really, I is never, I mean, you have to be so careful who you give your emotional access to okay. because people kill your dreams, you know? Mm -hmm. 
um, you think someone, I don't know, I think it has happened to people, but with me personally, I've had these few instances, I would call, maybe you make a mistake and you run to someone like mine, this and this, and then instead of helping, they break you. you know? Yeah. So I feel like people have to be so careful who they give your emotional access to because not everyone there is out to build you. Some are there to break you, you know? mm-hmm. to kill your dream, to make you feel like, oh, you haven't tried. Oh, we know better. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're failing. Instead of pushing you, you know? Mm-hmm. So at some point when you are supposed to drill alone, you do that. Mm-hmm. Okay? You do that. You be careful with who you're going to run to and consult. It's okay to dream and put it into action. That's it. Yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good life lesson. I'm I'm glad you shared that to all the people who are listening to make sure they pick up something like right? not everybody's happy for you, not everybody's happy for your success. Some people are just mm-hmm. to watch you uh, fail and but you just gotta keep going. What yeah. what gets you excited about life? That the fact that every day I learn um, something new mm-hmm. excites me. Like every morning I wake up, I'm like, oh I can do this. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is possible. Every day I learn a new Leah. Every day I see a new me. And I would say I'm so many things. People ask me, oh, what are you? I'm like, I'm so many things. And yeah. with time, when they engage with me, they're like, I didn't know you could do this. I didn't know you could do that. So every single day, I feel I'm a flexible, ready person. Like I learn new about myself. Mm-hmm. You know? And that excites me about life. And the fact that I'm always happy despite challenges. I'm always mm-hmm. just happy uh, i don't i really show i'm down actually yeah. it's hard to find me looking funny it, it's hard because mm-hmm. <laughs> i know this will pass it's a yeah. cloud it will pass that's 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 really good uh you only get down if you get that tiktok of that guy who said i'm 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 feeling a business what oh my god that's a topic for next time okay like what right. the hell and then he had the ash to say, Nimuloko. Nimuloko, yes, 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 she has an episode mm-hmm. here. Um, I interviewed oh. her. And the first time I saw you together, I was like, hey, I think I need to interview Leah on the when I saw your picture, I was like, I think she'll be interesting <laughs> to have on the podcast. Just have a conversation. I just wanted to pick your brains, and it's not um what did I, I was going to say? Uh it's I wanted to pick your brains and it's exactly what I expected. And like how are you serious? <laughs> That, that that brings us to a saying that birds of the same feather <laughs> always work together. <laughs> That's why. Well, I, I will shout uh-huh. out to Jen. I love her so much. She's so supportive, very supportive, and a very confident model. Ever since I met that girl, it's been you know it's been fun. She's always in for me no matter what. She'll squeeze time, even though it's mm-hmm. five minutes. Yeah. She'll be like, "Man, yeah, let's be here." So every time we meet her, it's like, "Ooh, where did we start? Or where did we stop last time?" We just I love her so much. Yeah. Yeah. So my final question. Who would you like to see on my podcast? And you're going to help me find that person to be our next guest on here. And you're quite sure you could find this person? No, you are going to help me to find this person. (laughs) You recommend them and you find them. Wow. This is a challenge. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Um, should it be only in my country? Really? Oh beyond the it border. can be in Uganda, it can be anywhere, as long as you and I coordinate to get this person on the podcast. And if you recommend a celebrity and I get similar money, then we're both of us gonna have to find them. Is this one woman I've always loved all my life? I you're going to even laugh about this, but mm-hmm. If we could get Rihanna to this podcast. Rihanna or, or Muzungu exactly. America. Hey, hey, Oyo. What's my name, girl? <laughs> What's my... One person I really, really, oh my God, I'll just yeah. love to touch her. I'll, I I'll, love her. I'll, I'll throw my armies <laughs> out there, but I'm not, 
I'm not ah! uh, expecting anything. <laughs> yeah, expect. Okay. The one thing I want is try your luck, shoot your shot, do whatever you can. You know, it doesn't hurt to try. Like when I just told you, hey, I don't know if I can get to Rihanna. Like we both know it's close to impossible. It's but <laughs> yes, I've I also know. I've also seen stories of like somebody just DM'd this celebrity was like I'm just shooting my shot. I don't know if they're gonna even see it. And they saw it. Mm -hmm. And they were like, I just messaged this person and they saw my message. And that's that was the start of the dream of like getting lost. So that was one thing you can do in life is just try and start. And exactly. So don't you think we can try? I think we can try. We rather try and fail, try. but don't fail to try. Yeah, exactly that's something they told us. Yeah. Exactly than finding a way. So I think starting tomorrow, I'm going to start the race. Yeah. I don't know I'll, about you. I'll start too. I'll start. I'll start right away. But anyway, Leah, I I know you and I can have conversation for years, for days. And I think I'm going to try to get you back on here for, with a different topic. So we can talk about that guy who is a Molokoli who is trying to get a woman <laughs> to, get, to get him a job. Exactly. Trying so, to get everything straight for them. The silver yeah. spoon without working for it. Really? I want to see your, I want to see your opinion on that. So I'll end this. Year. But before I end this, um, I want my listeners, I have a lot of listeners around the world. Most of my audience in the United States, um, I'd like them to connect with you. And if there's somebody there who has listened to your story and they want to ask you questions like your social media platform, can you share those with us? And I know you created the Miss Lotteract um, platform and I know it's an ongoing project. Uh, would you mind sharing that with the listeners too? Okay, I'll start with my individual ones. Um, I'm Navukaria Leah throughout on um, Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and Snapchat. And then with the Miss Rotaract going on, we have, it's Miss Rotaract Uganda on Facebook, on um, Twitter, and Instagram. That's where they can find me. Yeah. All right, Leah, I don't want to take a lot of your time. I appreciate you. Um, coming on here and having a conversation with me it's been fun um talking to you oh, yeah. it's been fun bonnie it is really um yeah talking it's mm -hmm. really fun sharing this i love that you invite different people i love that you reach out to people and you're supporting the people from UG. it's mm -hmm. beautiful you know um and it's challenging because you don't know who's going to say yes to eat or not. Mm -hmm. but what you do is really nice and you should continue doing it's really fun you meet different personalities mm -hmm. you laugh about life you're like wow yeah. i didn't know this person existed yeah so many we are aliens to everyone yeah. until you know them and also the other thing i look about is like i make friends so like you and i after having a conversation then we stay friends for, for forever you know like all the guests that i've had on my podcast we create this relationship and getting to know their lives so it's also i'm a people person i like having friends so it's always nice meeting another person all right. Thanks so much, Bonnie. All right. All right. All right. I'll be in Uganda sometime soon and I'll ask for it. All right. Bye. Bye. Hey there. Uh, this is Bonnie Kibuka, the host of the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. Thanks for watching and listening to my podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it with a friend and recommend somebody to this podcast. Don't forget to leave a feedback on this podcast because that's how we grow. And also don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. Join us on our social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much and be blessed.